Have you ever felt nostalgic about an old game that you used to play when you were younger? So you decide to look it up and see if anyone else is still playing that game or even if it still exists. Sometimes you might find that the old game not only exists, but it's thriving. Other times you might find it exists, but no one's really playing it. And then, of course, you might find that not only does the game have no players, but it was shut down and forgotten years and years ago. Many fan favorite games have lost the developer's support over the years, whether that just be servers shutting down or a lack of people to run the constant care and maintenance that a live service game requires. However, does that really mean that the game is gone forever? Well, not always. Today, I want to take a look at some of the games that by all means have been shut down and should no longer exist. But through fan recreation and a lot of hard work and what I can only assume is a technical nightmare, some of these long shutdown games actually still exist, at least in a form or a way that's playable. Note, some of these fan recreations are more true to the source material, some being as close to a one-to-one -one copy as possible, whereas others, not so much. I want to find some of these long-forgotten fan recreated games and answer a few questions. Are these games still completely viable and basically existing as their own MMO? Are some so laggy and buggy and dysfunctional that it's hard to tell what's even happening? And what kind of players are actually online in these games, if any? But really quick, before we jump into all that, I would like to remind everybody that channel memberships are active. If you've been enjoying my content and MMOs, I would massively appreciate any and all support as these videos take a lot of time and effort. If that's not your cup of tea, don't worry, a like and a subscription would really help me out as well. Thanks guys, now let's get into this. So first off, I decided to ask myself, what's one of the oldest MMOs that I played as a child? Well, there's EverQuest and then there's RuneScape, but those still exist. And then I remembered something. Some deep core memory was unlocked. I felt my body lock up and in an almost comatose state of rigor mortis, this face flashed before me. Toontown, a 2003 cartoon-based MMO developed by Disney. I don't actually quite remember how I got my hands on this game as a child, perhaps it was a CD-ROM found inside a box of cereal, or I simply saw some of the commercials that was airing on TV at the time. Either way, I have a distinct memory of logging in and exploring this world when I was probably somewhere between the ages of 5 and 8 years old. Unfortunately, after 10 years of operation, Toontown was shut down permanently on September 19th of 2013. With Disney quoting, at this time, we are shifting our development focus towards other online and mobile play experiences. However, Toontown was a game that required a subscription to play, and this was during an era where we were really starting to see the rise of free-to-play monetization strategies across the board for both online and mobile games, which is probably the primary cause of its shutdown as it wasn't as sustainably profitable as it was prior. With all that being said, Toontown fans must have been outraged, because a small team of dedicated players began working on a project, and a mere two months after the game's initial closure, we saw the alpha release of Toontown rewritten, these days boasting over 2 million registered players and apparently hundreds are online at any given time. The Toontown rewritten website is actually quite nicely designed, and apparently there's an event, Toonfest, happening this year. Okay. I downloaded and updated the game, as well as adjusted a few of the settings. Everything seemed to work fairly smoothly, so I was excited to get into character creation. Or should I say tune creation? You're presented with a male and female option and it tells you to change your style, which apparently can be changed later. Every time you click one of these options, it randomizes your character's… race? and style, so I found one that stylistically aligned with me in real life and was immediately met with more customization. It appears there are a few different playable races, which are all based on animals that you might find in real life. I ended up choosing the mouse as I figured in any PvP situation, I might have a click box advantage. However, any potential advantages soon became the least of my priorities as I realized how ridiculous some of the customization can get. So I made the shortest and fattest mouse possible. After a few more customization options and choosing an outfit that my dad might wear on vacation, it was time to choose a name. Now, this is where things get interesting. You can just choose a username and type it in if you would like. However, Toontown gives you username recommendations, with a single first name and a two-part last name. I'm ashamed to admit that I spent altogether way too long trying to find an inappropriate name combination. However, failing to do so, I still recognize the comedy in alliteration. And so, I must introduce you to... Poe Picklepop, the short and fat mouse who dresses like my dad on vacation. Immediately, I was given a wave of nostalgia as the WASD keys do not work to move around. Instead, you have to use the arrow keys. 
So awkwardly reaching across my keyboard, I found Tutorial Tom. He explains that these characters dressed in business clothes are known as cogs, and they are threatening to take over Toontown. It's my job to stop them at every chance I get. I'm introduced to a couple of my abilities, which are known as gags, and I currently have throw and squirt. A quick tutorial that teaches you how combat works. Oh, it's turn-based. Why is this so reminiscent of Final Fantasy? Even the music choice is so Final Fantasy-like. I wonder if Disney reached out to Square Enix when they developed Toontown in order to really hone in their turn-based combat system. I beat the cog and received a throw point as well as a squirt point, and I was told that after I get 10 of those points in each gag, I would be able to get a new ability. After a few more tutorial activities, I was taken to Flippy, who taught me how to use the chat feature. You can just type in-game if you want, however you need to register your account online and verify your age to do so. But the game does have a ridiculous amount of quick chat options that I'm sure are used appropriately at all times. So I made my way into Toontown Central, and to my utter surprise, there were actually other players and tunes hanging out. I walked up to a group of other tunes, one was named Mr. Stinky, and I thought this might be a friendly time for me to introduce myself. I said, hey ya, with as much enthusiasm as a short fat mouse could muster. Unfortunately, I was immediately shut down as Mr. Stinky said no and shook his head. I thought this game was just a nostalgic recreation of a game that was played by elementary school aged children. I didn't think it would literally transport me back to getting shunned by my peers in elementary school. Either way, I didn't let that bully bother me and I continued to attempt to socialize with those around me. However, after a bit of observation, I realized that the other tunes around me might be participating in, let's say, nefarious online interaction. So I decided to hop on the trolley as the game was directing me. Unfortunately, my two acquaintances that I had just recently met decided to join me. Now, the trolley works on a majority rules voting system in which there are certain directions the trolley can take, which will lead to different games that you and everyone on the trolley can play together. The votes are anonymous until the voting session is complete, at which point you can see what each person voted for. I used all of my five voting powers to attempt to change the direction in which it appeared that these two characters were trying to go. Afterwards, Princess Mo Sparkleburger decided to let me know that I stink. Either way, we made it to a cannon game in which you attempt to shoot your tune out of a cannon and land in a giant well. And, well, that's when I decided I had about enough of this game so far. You know, I'm very happy that Toontown still exists for people like me who might be wondering whatever happened to it. You can log in and explore and play this old world that was all but non-existent in September of 2013. However, I'm gonna be completely honest here, I think the remaining player base is... An interesting one, to say the least. Next, this one is a bit of a lesser known MMORPG, and I was surprised that it's still available to play, albeit in a much more roundabout sort of way. The Matrix Online, an MMORPG developed by Monolith, which set out to follow a continuation of the storyline of the Matrix films. It was released in 2005, and the rights were actually sold to Sony Online Entertainment. However, the game was short-lived, with operations shutting down a mere three and a half years later in 2009, due to, quote, a lackluster reception to the following films, as well as an overcrowded MMORPG market. So how is this game still playable in 2024? Well, it's not really. You can log into the world and explore and use a few abilities, but any of the main gameplay and even combat is not enabled. Through some research and an interesting website, I was able to find this fan-made project, the Matrix Online Server Emulator. After jumping through some hoops and spending an absolutely ridiculous amount of time downloading and patching the game, I was able to log in. You actually log in and select character creation from the launcher, which I thought was fairly interesting. After some technical difficulties with OBS, I managed to get into the game, and I was met with this screen. There's a recording of a random street in the bottom right corner, and you're given 10 different options from detached spectator to true believer, which I think is your class selection? All of them having different attributes that they start with, but giving you no visual indicator of what those attributes might do or how it might affect your gameplay. After going through a few options, I landed on the secluded introvert. As I've never felt so called out by an early 2000s MMORPG server emulator before, I basically had no choice. The actual character creation gives you two options for female and two options for male, though I'm not sure why as you can completely customize everything besides their gender down below. 
The style is very nostalgic and reminiscent of early 2000s games. I felt like I should be listening to Hybrid Theory and loading up Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. After a fair amount of messing around with customization, I was happy with my character's appearance and I decided to head into the game, which prompts you to give a username, a first name, a last name, and even a description about your character. So, my name is Way Dot, first name Way, last name Dot, and I'm a secluded, introverted YouTube creator. Interestingly enough, you're immediately met with a bunch of cinematics from the game in which you can watch at your leisure. Unfortunately for me, this caused a massive amount of technical difficulties, so I had to restart the game. I tried to log back in, and the game told me that my character is already in use according to the object server supervisor. Okay. One new character creation session later, let's avoid the cinematics, how the heck do I actually play the game? There's a few different menus available, the cinematics, a character sheet showing your abilities, as well as another ability tree which documents my awakened disciples. Okay. Oh, here we go. Jack into the Matrix. Let's do this. Uh-oh. Negotiating with servers. Hopefully this works. Success! So, like I said, this is the server emulator, so you can explore different maps and parts of the world as well as see and interact with some NPCs that were related to each area. Now, I have to say, this must have been one of the most unique MMORPGs, especially considering the time when it was actually released. Almost all other games were either set in a fantastical medieval setting or perhaps set way in the future like Star Wars Galaxies. Even these days, you don't see too many MMORPGs that are actually set in the world at a somewhat modern time. This phone booth here is considered a hard line, and you're able to teleport around the game using phone booths. I realized that my action bar is actually located at the top of the screen, which is something I've never seen before, and I decided to slot in some of the abilities that my character had. Like I said, there's no combat available, but you are able to play around with some of the non-combat abilities. I activated my hyper sprint, which kind of glitches you out, but it increases your movement speed. And as far as I can tell, this stays active as long as you allow it to, with no apparent cooldown or timer. There's also the hyper jump. Pretty badass. I decided to just run around and explore the map and take a look at what I could find. The game's art style and music already lends itself to a very dissociative and cold world, but the fact that I was playing a 20-year-old game on an emulator in which no other players were online left me with a very forlorn feeling. It was like stepping into a memory from the past in which I had no business being there. I messed around with the teleporter and found a few more locations. Generally, the aesthetic was relatively the same, sort of ghetto-like and depressing in a modern North American city sort of way. It reminded me of the shadier parts of some bigger cities like Chicago or New York. I found this giant wasteland corruptor, a glitch in the matrix, and after a short while longer, I felt like I had seen my fill. It's interesting, without this emulator existing, I would have no opportunity to ever visit this world or see this game. So, in a way, it's such a cool relic of the past that we have of a game that ultimately wasn't very successful and doesn't exist anymore. But I really can't shake the ominous feeling that I had while exploring this world. I guess this is what happens when an MMO truly dies. And finally, did you ever play Pirates of the Caribbean Online? Another Disney-developed MMO, this one was released in 2007 after getting pushed back multiple times. It was actually a fairly well-received MMO, even winning some awards such as the Parents' Choice Award and Online Game of the Year in 2008. However, unfortunately, due to a lack of interest and an eerily similar quote from Disney, Pirates Online, as it was commonly known, was shut down in 2013. However, in 2015, a group of fans known as the TLOPO, which stands for the Legend of Pirates Online, crew, decided to band their efforts together in order to release an unofficial, free-to-play fan revival. And you can find this at TLOPO.com. They've done their best to archive all of the game's history from the older website. And nowadays, The Legend of Pirates Online exists as its own game, and even receives its own updates from time to time. I never got the opportunity to play this game when I was younger, though I did hear of it when it was released. I assumed it was a bit of a gimmick that was leeching on the Pirates of the Caribbean's franchise's success in order to sell a subpar MMO. But let's jump into it and decide for ourselves. The installation process for Tilapo was much quicker and easier than The Matrix despite having a fairly similar launcher. Six character creation slots? Okay, let's do it. Oh, look who it is. 
Captain Jack Sparrow. How naive we all were to watch these movies when we were younger, not realizing that we would all hear of the gruesome in-depth details of Johnny Depp's abusive relationship later in life. Anyways, character creation. I'm starting to form a bit of a new strategy when it comes to creating characters in MMOs that I'm briefly trying. That strategy is to maximize my efforts in order to get my character to look as ugly as possible. Let's see how that works here. Oh, they really have a lot of customization. This is beautiful. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. Is that a mole? Perfect! To be honest, he looks just like me. Wait, what? They have the exact same naming system that was used in Toontown. I'm kind of surprised. I wonder if it's the exact same development team that worked on both of these games. Well, I might as well follow the pattern of alliteration that I used prior in Toontown. Meet Billy Badbeard, which is ironic because he has no beard. He's a short, balding man with a massive mole on the left side of his head. He likes pink shirts and shorts and tends to wear the same outfit on most days. While appearing to be nearly 60 years old, he is surprisingly only 23. Captain Sparrow helps break you out of jail and you are asked if you would like to participate in the tutorial or not. I decided I might need a tutorial to figure out this one. Interestingly enough, while WASD did not work in Toontown, it definitely works here. I was actually surprised at the amount of voice acted cutscenes. Here we have Orlando Bloom, and it actually sounds quite like him. You're Jack's friend. Please accept my apology. He hands you a sword, and you practice on some dummies nearby. It's a mix of tab target, ability based, and action combat. You left click to use your sword, but you can also use your abilities. It actually feels slightly ahead of its time. I quickly stabbed myself in the nether region while talking to Orlando and made my way outside, where I fought a few undead skeletons and made my way to a ship. Was... was that the whole tutorial? While aboard the ship, I used the cannon to help shoot down an enemy pirate ship, before being met with some more undead pirates who said that they were looking for none other than Jack Sparrow. Luckily, they let me live, and it was now my job to warn Jack about the skeleton pirates that were after him. My character, Billy Badbeard, looked completely at ease while being told to walk the plank and forced to swim his way to Port Royal. Okay, so am I in the game now? Is the tutorial over? It says to follow the ray of light leading to your quest target, but unfortunately I don't appear to have any discernible rays of light that are indicating where to go. Wait, is that another player? Wait. Okay. They're gone. I explored around this little area, and I was supposed to kill three more undead, but I couldn't really find my way around. I also kept getting distracted by how much my character looked like a thumb whenever he ran around. Ah, the undead gravediggers. Perfect. Afterwards, I was told to get release orders from a navy cadet and to sneak into the governor's mansion. Oh yeah, this chick. Elizabeth? Was that her name? I could be so wrong here. I haven't watched the films in over a decade. Anyway, she gives me a mission to go find Jack Sparrow and warn him of his impending doom, and thus I need to take a ship. On my way back to the shipyard, I found another player, Leon Raidrat. He threatened me with his sword, so I decided to follow him. I said hi, but I didn't get any response. He seemed to be a rather busy man, talking with a variety of NPCs, even trying to kill poor little Rosetta here. Unfortunately, he seemed too busy and or mute to speak with me. There's also a fair chance that he thought my character was so strange looking that I scared him. So I decided to find the shipyard. No way you get to name your ship with preset names as well. I am now Billy Badbeard, owner of the illustrious Barnacle Bull. Alright, let's get sailing. I was put onto my boat, and in order to control it, you just need to interact with the steering wheel. Okay, now this is definitely ahead of its time. I was expecting a typical pirate-esque gameplay, but an open world where you can legitimately sail a boat across the open seas? I was thinking that might have been a little out of scope for the 2006 Disney-made pirate game. But I was wrong. I mean, it's the year 2024, and Old School RuneScape still hasn't released their sailing skill. Yet, here I am playing a fan recreation of an almost two decade old game, and they managed to figure it out. Come on, Jagex. Now, I couldn't tell if the other boats that I could see on the horizon were actually other players, or perhaps just other interactable NPC boats. But I was told to make my way to the island of Devil's Anvil, at which point you can put down your anchor in order to land. Seriously, I am blown away by this. After finishing a short mission on Devil's Anvil, I was given a musket and shown how to use a gun and its abilities. Apparently you can have up to four weapons that you can switch between and use different abilities with each weapon. It's actually kind of a cool system. Then I sailed to the island of Tortuga and finally re-met with Captain Jack Sparrow. Though he didn't really remember me. I got to level 3 and I must say, all in all, I'm fairly impressed with the recreation of Pirates Online. 
it seems to be working well, I saw a couple of other players, and to be honest, I was kind of having fun. This seems like a game in the future that I might honestly do a deep dive on. To find out more about this world with sailing mechanics way, way ahead of what was available during its time of release. Anyway folks, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video taking a look at some of the fan recreations of games that were shut down and no longer exist. There's lots more out there and lots more where this came from, so if you would like to see more videos, please let me know down below. Also, make sure to recommend any other games that you think I should try out. I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who made it to the end of the video. Don't forget a like, a comment, a subscription, those help a bunch, and if you really enjoyed the video, consider becoming a channel member. Anyway, I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.